Okay, so let us begin uh, our lectures for week three. So uh, today we are going to uh, discuss counting. So just as a preview, we will discuss. So this is, so counting means uh, the following. So it also goes under the name of uh, combinatorics in some uh, sort of parts uh, in or in some uh, sources. Uh, so what is going? Uh, so so what are we going to count? So what are we going to count is the following. So uh, in many sort of natural problems uh, involving arrangements of various things like permutations and combinations, or uh, the number of ways of doing certain certain tasks, the number of ways of accomplishing certain tasks, they can be uh, there are uh, there are sometimes neat mathematical formula for counting the number of such ways or the number of such arrangements. And uh, these uh, uh, and more important than the formulas perhaps are the sort of the conceptual ways or techniques of reasoning how to accomplish these countings. Okay? So that is what we are going to discuss uh, this week. So we are going to discuss the number, uh, the, uh, the methods for counting arrangements in a row, permutations and combinations. Then we will go to what is known as the binomial theorem, and then we will do some counting of the number of routes on a rectangular grid. And this will give you uh, overview of the various counting methods that are available in basic mathematics. Okay, and more importantly, it will expose you to important. Uh, styles of mathematical reasoning that can be employed in these uh, sort of uh, uh, these math problems which come from uh, day to day situations okay so without further ado let us go to our mo motivating example so uh, let's think of uh, Poker. So, for those of you who are familiar with cards, uh, it's going to be useful because uh, many of the counting problems are often uh, stated in terms of various configurations of cards, which you can draw out of a full set of 52 cards. Okay. So, uh, you know, in poker there are various hands. Like the most important, perhaps, is the royal flush. And then the straight flush, the four of a kind, and various other ways of uh, obtaining the um, uh, various other uh, hands in poker. So these are all sets of five cards drawn from a uh, from the entire entire full set, which, as you know, consists of 52 cards. Uh, and uh, these are um, uh, and uh, the and. Just as a motivating example, it is often going, going to be useful to understand how many such configurations, how many royal flushes can be there, how many straights can be there, etc. Okay? In other words, how many ways you can draw 5 cards up to 52, so that the conditions of a royal flush is, uh, op is satisfied or the condition of a straight flush is satisfied or the condition of a full house is satisfied and so on. Okay? So, it is a and you know, so there are, so of course, the naive way to do this kind of countings will be as follows. So you just write down all possible collections of five cards which you can draw from 52, and then you manually check which ones satisfy the conditions of a royal flush, and there you will have your number. But the point is that the number of ways of choosing 5 cards from a full set of 52 cards is huge. So, the potential number of uh, possibilities from which you have to manually pick the configurations of royal flush are simply too large to deal with. Okay? So, that is a problem. And uh, the entire idea of combinatorics or counting is that there are certain mathematical tricks or ways of reasoning about these uh, how to count these numbers so that without going through this tedious and often impossible procedure of manually listing all the possibilities and picking out the right configurations from them, you can 
just using these tricks, you can just straight away write down the number of uh, royal flushes uh, from a deck of 52 cards. Okay? So, that is kind of the flavor just to set the stage. But uh, let us uh, uh, let us uh, let us first uh, discuss the first basic style or strand of reasoning that you have in counting. Uh, so we will do this via an example. So suppose you have a wardrobe, and you have three hats A, B, and C, and two coats, coats namely coat coat one and coat two. Okay. Now of course we all have many more, but let us take this simple example. Uh, assuming uh, and imagine that you feel comfortable with wearing any hat with any coat. That is also a condition that is rarely satisfied in reality, but let us imagine it was the case for the sake of math. Okay? Uh, so, I want to find the, so, uh, so any coat can be worn with any hat. So, I want to find out the total number of possible combinations of coat and hat, which I can obtain from these three hats and two coats. Okay? So, this is our goal. So, how do we do it? So, look at this picture. Okay? So, I hope all of you can see. Uh, so, you have coat 1 and coat 2 and then along with coat 1, you have hat A, hat B or hat C. Similarly, along with code 2, you have hat A, hat B or hat C. So, it is in the form of a sort of a sort of a branching process or a tree. Okay? So, it is like a, so you are making these decisions of wearing coats and hats together in combination and you do it sequentially. So, first you are at 0, which means that you are, you have, have not yet chosen any coat or any hat, you are just starting. Then you first pick a coat. So, you could choose coat 1 or you could choose coat 2. Once you have chosen the coat, then you look at the hats and then you could choose any of the three hats or if you had chosen coat 2, you could choose any of the three hats. So, the total number of ways is actually given by the total number of uh, terminal points in these tree like structure. Okay? So, the total number of hat and coat combinations is the same as the total number of do dots here, which are you represent your decision making process in the form of a tree like this. In, you can think of it as a decision tree and you can and these are the terminal points of the decision tree and each terminal point of this tree like structure gives you a unique combination of hat and coat. So, in a way, you just need to count how many terminal points are there. And how many terminal points are there? Well, you can first go left or right. So, this, this represents the choice of the coat. So, you could choose coat 1 or coat 2. That you can do in two ways. Wow. This you can do in two ways. And then the hat, once you have chosen a coat, then you can go to a hat in for each choice of the coat, you can go to a you can pick a hat in three ways. So you multiply the ways of choosing a coat by the number of hats. So it is 2 into 3, which is 6, and you can count that the number of coats and combinations of coats and hats, which is equivalently the number of dots here is 6. Okay? So, this is sort of the whole idea. So, there is a formal way to discuss about this. It is called the multiplication principle. So, assume a task can be broken up into two consecutive steps. So, always keep the hat and coat example in mind. So, you, your task was to wear a hat and a coat. So, you break this task into two consecutive steps. So, for example, first you pick a coat to wear and then you pick a hat to go along with that coat. Okay? So, uh, in general you can think of a task that can be broken into two consecutive steps. If step 1 can be performed in n ways, 
So, in the previous diagram, step 1 was choice of a coat and it could be performed, this coat could be chosen in two ways. So, the step 1 was performed in n 1 equal to two ways. And for each of these ways of accomplishing step 1, which is in the previous example was for each of the way of choosing a coat, you could choose the next step, you could perform the next step in n 2 ways. So, in the previous example for each way of choosing the coat, you could choose a hat to go along with that coat in three possible ways. So, there n 2 was equal to 3. Then the total task as a combination of this step 1 and step 2 could be performed in n 1 multiplied by n 2 ways. So, in the previous example, n 1 was the number of ways of choosing a coat, which was 2 and n 2 was the number of ways of choosing a hat to go along with your chosen coat. So, that was 3. So, 6 ways and we already counted that it was 6, right. So, what this multiplication principle is saying that this is more general and any task which you could break down into two steps with one with n 1 ways of performing the first, first step and for each way of performing the first step, there are n 2 possible ways of performing the second step, you get the total number of ways of doing this task as n 1 times n 2 ways. Okay? So, this is the whole idea. So, this is the multiplication principle and you can easily see that if you added a belt to go with your coat and hat. So, suppose there are now four belts in your wardrobe and you want a belt to match with your combination of coat and hat. Then, of course, for each combination of coat and hat, you could choose a belt in four ways. So, the total number of ways of choosing a belt, hat and coat combination would be 2 into 3 into 4 ways. right? So, this idea of multiplying the number of ways of doing things as you break, break it down into more and more steps is can be extended to many different number of steps. So, coat and hat was just two steps, coat, hat and belt three steps and in general you can think of a task involving a sequence of m steps and if the ith step can be completed in n i ways, then there are total n 1 times n 2 times up to n m ways to complete the task. Okay? And an important condition is that the ways each step can be completed are independent of each other. So, in the hat and the coat example, for every choice of coat I had, I could choose any of the hats. Okay? So, that is important. If, if it was the case that I, I would, there were some coats with which I would not wear certain hats, then it would be more complicated. right? So, it is important in using the multiplication principle that for every way of performing the step 1, there are all the possible ways of performing step 2 are available to us. Okay? So, that is important. So, that is what we have used here. That is the only condition. Okay? As soon as this condition is met, you can use the logic of the multiplication principle and, um, and uh, do this uh, counting of the number of ways to perform the task. And what I would uh, actually like to mention, uh, actually like to emphasize here is that, uh, for example, in something like the multiplication principle, you should not worry too much about the formula as such. Okay? You should really focus on the way of reasoning, how you arrive at n 1 times n 2 or n 1 times n 2 times da 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 up to n m. Okay? Because that is the key, the line of reasoning or the way of arguing is the key. Uh, so, I would like, I would suggest that you have, when you apply this kind of multiplication principle or things like that, uh, do not try to apply it as a formula. Instead, every time you apply it, you reason in your mind that here is what I am doing and here are my choices of quotes and here for each choice of quotes, I am choosing the hats in three ways and therefore, I get 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Okay? So, I would suggest that you use the multiplication principle less as a formula and more as a way of reasoning. Okay? That is quite important and that can save you from a lot of trouble later. Okay? Any questions? Okay. So, here is another counting problem. So, car license plates in Singapore has the form 
like this. So the front and the rear are basically the same. The only difference is that the front is black on white, whereas the rear is black on yellow. Okay, so let's just focus on the front. So what is the format? So we are interested in the number of possible number uh, number plates. Okay. So what uh, so what is the format? The first letter is S. Okay. The second letter can the the following two letters could be anything. Okay, any combination of two letters between A and Z. Next, there are four digits between 0 and 9, as in here, and then a single letter. So, this is the format. And the question is how many possible number plates are there? Okay. So, let us try to solve this. I mean, in principle, we will be using something like the multiplication principle, but as I already suggested to you, you should, instead of using it like a formula, you should sort of go through the reasoning in each application. So, let us start from the basics and do the reasoning. So, what we will do is that how many, uh, how many characters are there? There are three characters here, and then there are four letters, so seven and one letter in the end, so eight, eight characters, right. So, what we will do is that we will fill up every character one by one, starting from the left to the right, the eight characters we will fill up one by one. So, how do we do this? So, think of the eight characters like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. So, first character is this one or let me write it here. So, this the first character is this one, this is always an S. So, if it is always an S, there is only one way to fill up the first spot. Okay? So, not much there. The second letter can be anything between A, A to Z. So, how many alphabets are there between A to Z? There are total 26 alphabets between A to Z. So, the second spot can be filled for with any of these 20, 26 alphabets. Okay? So, now we have, suppose we have fixed the first two spots, first two letters or first two characters. For each combination of the first two characters fixed in this manner, you can fill up the third character also by any letter between A and Z. So, again one of any of these 26 letters between A and Z. So, now we have fixed the first three, filled the first three, three spots. So, we know the first three characters. So, once we know the first three characters, for each combination of first three characters, you can, you have to fill the next four digits. So, for each combination of the first three characters, the next one is a digit between 0 and 9. So, how many digits are between 0 and 9? So, 1 to 9, there are 9 numbers and you also have 0, so total 10. So, 10 numbers. Right. So, for each way of fixing the first three characters of the number plate, you can fill the fourth spot by any of these 10 numbers. So, multiplication multiplied by 10 times 10, right. Okay. So, far so good. Any questions? So, now we have filled the first four spots. Now, we are going to fill the fifth spot. We know that the first four, four spots could be filled in these many ways. For every way of fixing the first four characters like this, the fifth character is again another digit between 0 and 9. So, again any one of these 10 possibilities, so times 10. Now, we have fixed 5. So, for any combination of these first five characters, the sixth one is also a digit between 0 and 9, any digit between 0 and 9. Now, we have 6, rinse and repeat. So, for any combination of these 6, the seventh one is also any possible digit between 0 and 9. So, another multiplication by 10. 
And finally, you have a single letter which can be anything between A and Z. So, for each possible way of fixing the first seven characters, the last character of the number plate can be chosen in among from among any of these 26 alphabets. So, times 26. So, this is the total number of possible number plates. Okay? So, it looks like a big number. So, let us sort of try to simplify it and make it look nicer. So, let us we will write it in terms of powers. So, you see because there are many repetitions in these multiplication. So, we will we will express this total number number plates in terms of powers. So, how many 26s are there? So, the multiplication by 1 is nothing right because it multiplication by 1 leaves everything unchanged. So, how many 26s are there? There are 3 26s multiplied with each other. So, you get 26 to the power of 3, 26 cubed. And then you have 4 tenths multiplied with each other. So, you get 10 to the power of 4, which is what you have here. Okay? Any question? Any question? Okay. So, arrangements in a row. So, uh, so now we are going to uh, count the number of ways to arrange a certain number of objects in a row. So, this is another counting problem, but you will see that these techniques build on each other. So, you start with uh, you know this basic way of hats and coats problem. So, you know you sort of understand how to multiply these number of do ways of doing some things and break down break it down into several steps and obtain the total number by multiplying the, the number of ways of doing these various steps. And essentially, it is more and more sophisticated applications of these few basic principles. That is what we shall see. Okay? So, the next example are arrangements in a row. So, uh, what is the problem? So, there are n distinct objects. So, think of n as 10 or something like that. So, there are several n distinct objects. Uh, for example, you can think of the numbers between 1, 2, 3, 4 up to n and you want to uh, find the number of ways of arranging these indistinct objects in a row. So, you can think of a simple example where uh, you have where n is equal to 3 let us say and you have uh, balls 3 balls of different colors. So, white, black and red and you want to place them on this table like this and you want to find of course, uh, you know there are various ways of uh, placing the ball. So, for example, the white could be in the center or it could be at the extreme, the red and the black could be side by side, whereas in some other configuration they could be uh, separated by the white and so on. So, these are all different ways of arranging the red, white and black balls and uh, you are, uh, so they can be arranged in different orders in other words and you want to calculate the total number of ways of arranging these uh, red, black and white balls on the table. So, that is the problem that we are talking about. So, what we will do is that in order to count the number of ways of arranging the n different objects, think of n balls of different colors, we will proceed exactly uh, using the reasoning that we did for the, uh, that we used for the previous problems. Okay? So, it is you know building on each other and the same basic principle. So, what is the principle? So what, so, what do we do? So, suppose there are n balls. So, suppose there are 3 balls n equal to 3. Okay? Take a simple example. What do you do? So, first draw placeholders. So, these are the balls from the left to right. So, the first place, the first position can be filled. So, you have 3 wow. So, you have three available balls. So, you are going to fill these spots and you are going to fill these spots successively from the left to right. So, your first fill spot 1, then fill spot 2, then fill 
spot 3. And you have 3 balls at your disposal when you start doing this. So, how many ways there are to fill the first spot? There are 3 ways of filling the first spot, right? Because you could take any of the 3 balls and put it in spot 1. So, there are 3 ways of filling out the first spot. Okay. Now, suppose you have filled the first spot by some particular ball. For each such way of filling the first spot by a ball of a particular color, then you have for the next spot, you have 2 remaining balls. Right? When you go after, after filling spot 1, when you go to fill spot 2, you have 2 remaining balls in your hand. And with these 2 balls, you want to fill spot 2. So, you could pick any of these 2 balls and fill spot 2. Right? So, for each way of filling spot 1, you have 2 available ways of filling spot 2. So, 3 is multiplied by the 2 possible ways of filling spot 2. Okay? So, now you have filled the first two spots. Now, you are going to fill the third spot. But in order to, so you, but you had three balls to begin with and two of these balls you have already used in filling the first, spot, first two spots. So, you have only one ball remaining in your hand and one spot to fill. So, you do not have much of a choice. You just put the remaining ball in your hand in the only remaining spot and fill it out in only one way. So, multiply it by 1. So, the total number of ways of filling uh, 3 spots by 3 balls is 3 times 2 times 1 or 1 times 2 times 3. Okay? And this is also the same number, this is also the number of ways of arranging the 3 balls in the table on the table because or 3 distinct objects on the table because you know you can think of the spot 1 to be the leftmost, spot 2 to be the middle, spot 3 to be the rightmost and so on. Okay? So, the total number of ways of arranging 3 distinct objects on the table is 1 times 2 times 3. Clear? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. So, now we will deploy this understanding or this idea for n distinct objects. So, what do we do? Uh, okay. So, what do we do? So, again we think of the n positions of the balls as from left to right, spot 1, spot 2 up to spot n. So, n positions for the objects, spot 1, spot 2, spot 3, da da da, spot n. And we take our n distinct objects to fill these spots one by one from spot 1 successively up to spot n in order. So, I have n objects n distinct objects at my disposal. Think of n, dis n balls of different colors. I have n balls of different colors at my disposal and I am focusing on filling the first spot. How many ways can I do it? I can fill up the first spot. I can put any of these n balls in the first spot and fill it up. Right? So, there are n ways of filling out the first spot. Now, suppose I have filled the first spot 1. Now, I am going with my remaining balls to fill spot 2. Since I have put 1 ball in spot 1, I have n minus 1 balls remaining in my hand. And spot 2 is vacant and I for each way of filling spot 1, I can put any of the n minus 1 remaining balls in spot 2. So, the total number of ways I can do this is n minus 1, so times n minus 1. Okay? So, now I have filled spots 1 and 2. How many balls have I lost in doing so? I have put, I have filled 2 spots, so I have lost 2 balls. I have n minus 2 balls remaining in my hand and I am going to fill spot 3. In spot 3, for, so for each way of filling the first 2 spots, I can fill spot 3 
by any of the n minus 3 remaining balls in my hand. So, total number of ways of filling the first 3 spots is the previous number multiplied by n minus 3. Okay? And so, you go on until you reach the spot n. When you reach the spot n, you have filled all the previous n minus 1 spots. So, you have lost n minus 1 balls in doing so and you had total n balls to begin with. So, you have if you, if you had total n balls to begin with and you have put n minus 1 balls to use, then you have, you have only one ball remaining in your hand and you have only one spot to fill. So, the total number of ways of doing that is the previous number multiplied by 1 because there is only one way to do it. So, this total number is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times da 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 all the way until n and you can write this as the product of all the numbers one to, in the reverse order you can write this as 1 times 2 times. So, if you write this in the reverse order, this is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times da 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 up to n minus 1 times n. Okay? So, it is a product of the first n numbers and it is denoted by the simple symbol n factorial. So, n exclamation mark which is called n factorial. Okay? Any questions? So, n exclamation reads as n factorial and just by convention 0 factorial is 1. So, this is just convention and 0 factorial does not have any meaning in terms of uh, this kind of arrangements because think of it you are just trying to arrange 0 objects what does it mean right. Uh, but this is just mathematical convention that 0 factorial is taken to be 1. Okay? Any questions? Okay. So, here is another example where this kind of reasoning can be deployed. So, now you have 8 different objects and you want to form a row of 3 different objects. So, how is it different from the previous example? So, in the previous example, if you think of it in terms of spots and filling the spots with balls, in the previous example, you had n balls in your hand, n balls of different colors in your hand and you had n spots. So, the number of spots was the same as the number of balls. So, here we are doing something slightly more complicated where we have a certain number of balls of different colors and a certain number of spots to fill, but the number of spots is not the same as the number of balls. So, I have many more balls than spots to fill. Okay? So, it looks a bit more complicated, but what we shall see is that if you sort of reason about it, then the way of reasoning how to count this number is again this is exactly the same. So, the setting is slightly different, the problem is slightly different, maybe it is somewhat more complicated, but the line of reasoning is exactly the same, that is what we shall see. So, the, what is the problem? In how many ways can you form a row of 3 objects from 8 different objects? So, you want 3 objects. So, you think of, so you want a row of 3 objects. So, you think of them as pots. Okay? And you want to fill them by 8 possible different objects. So, 8 balls of different colors. So, how do you do it? Although the setting is slightly different, you deploy the same line of reasoning. So, how do you, you come with 8 balls of different colors and you want to fill these spots successively. So, first go to spot 1. How many ways can you fill spot 1? You have balls of 8 different colors. So, you can fill them with any of these 8 balls. So, the first spot can be filled in 8 ways. Very good. So, now you have put 1 ball in spot 1. How many balls have you do you have remaining in your hand? You have 7 balls remaining in your hand. For each of, of the for any ball you put in the first, uh, first spot, you can fill the second spot by any one of the 7 remaining balls. Right? So, times 7. Now, you have 6 balls in your hand. 
but only spot 3 to fill. So you go to spot 3, you can put any of the 6 remaining balls there. So for each way of filling spots 1 and 2, you can fill up spot 3 in 6 different ways. So times 6. So the logic is exactly the same, but the setting is different. So this is what I emphasize again and again in counting. It is important to understand the logic and not approach it in a formula oriented way. Okay? So the total number of ways is 8 times 7 times 6 and you can just calculate it as 336. Okay? Any questions? So let us take a break of 10 minutes at this point and after the break we will be back with more arrangements.
Okay, so let us continue. So before the break, we were uh, considering arrangement of different objects in a row. So here is a little uh, result, or here is a little uh, sort of concrete way of uh, thinking about the number of objects, uh, about no, uh, thinking about the number of ways of arranging a certain number of items, different objects in a row. So suppose I, so suppose we think of the previous situation. So we had a number of different objects and we wanted to form a row of three different objects. The only problem was that the number of objects we had to put in these spots was much more than the number of spots, right? So that was the situation. So here is a more general version of this situation. So you have n objects and you want to take k of these objects, k of these n objects and put them, arrange them in a row. Okay? So, uh, the, how many, the question is how many ways of doing this are there. So, uh, the, the answer is denoted by P and K. So, P and K is just a symbol for the number of ways of arranging K different objects, arranging in a row K different objects taken from N different objects. So, previous problem was n equal to 8 and k equal to 3. And this p and k, this number p and k is called the k permutations of n and it is also denoted by these various symbols by placing the n and k at various possible locations around the capital P. So, uh, So, how many, how many ways of doing this are there? So, uh, so here, is a, here, is a, here is what we are going to do. So, what we are going to do, so we have already solved this problem when n was 8 and k was 3. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to use the same logic. We will deploy the same logic in the general case for general n and general k. Okay? So, suppose these are the k spots. 1, 2, 3, 4 up to k and we want to fill them by n different objects by placing them, them in these k different slots. So, again let us go, we go with n different objects to the spot 1, fill it up in any of n possible ways. Now that we have filled spot 1, we have n minus 1 left in hand, n minus 1 objects left in hand and we go with these n minus 1 objects to spot 2 and fill it up in n minus 1 ways for each possible way of filling the first one. So, the total number of ways of filling the first two spots is n times n minus 1. For each way of filling the first two spots, go with the remaining n minus 2 objects in hand to the third spot and filling, fill it up in n minus 3 ways and so on. So, the last spot uh, when we go when we go to fill the last spot, how many objects do, do I have in hand? I have before the last spot, I have filled k minus 1 spots. So, out of total n balls, I have lost k minus 1 balls. So, I have n minus k minus 1 left in my hand. So, this is if you open the bracket, it is n minus k plus 1. So, I go with n minus k plus 1 distinct objects to the last spot or the kth spot. And for each way of filling the first k minus 1 places, I fill the last spot with any of these n minus k plus 1 objects. So, times n minus k plus 1. Okay? So, the total number of ways this p and k is n times n minus 1 times da 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 up to n minus k plus 1. Okay? Okay, clear? So far so good. And now we will write this expression in a bit, in a neat and compact way. So what to do? So how do we do that? So we notice that we have a neat expression, 
uh, short symbol if I had the product n minus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 da 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 all the way up till 1. If it was all the way up till 1, we have a nice symbol, compact symbol. So, basically the problem here is that we have exactly that kind of a product, but we stop at n minus k plus 1. We do not go all the way up till 1. So, that is a problem, right. So, how do we remedy this problem? Well, we force this to go all the way until 1, but you have really put this extra bit in. So, you have to compensate by dividing by the same thing. So, you divide also by n minus k, da da da, okay? that the number remains the same. But now, we are in good shape, because the numerator is just the product of everything from 1 to n. So, the numerator is just n factorial. What is the denominator? The denominator, if you look at it carefully, is also very nice, because now it is the product of everything starting from 1 up to n minus k. So, by definition of the factorial symbol, this is nothing but n minus k factor. Okay? Clear? Any questions? So, there you have your n factorial over n minus k factor. So, the next uh, uh, question, the next uh, item is the following. So, you have 3 red, 4 green and 5 blue bits. Okay? So, you want to put them in a row, you want to arrange them in a row, how many possible bits, how many possible arrangements are there. So, now, uh, so here is something. If you look so, of course, you have two. So, think of a very simple case. Suppose you have two balls. Suppose they are two of two different colors, one black, one white. And I want to place them on the table like this. How many different ways of doing this are there? Well, black to the left, white to the right, or white to the left, black to the right, two ways, right? But suppose they were of the same color. So, suppose both of them are red balls. How many ways of doing this are there? So, le let us take this red ball and that red ball. I place them here. Look at it. It is red, red, right? If you switch, again it is red, red. You cannot tell the difference. So, the point is that if you have beads of the same color or balls of the same color, the when you take the balls of the same color and switch the arrangement between them, you do not notice a different. You do not, you do not notice a difference. If you have beads of the same color or balls of the same color, then switching around these beads or switching around these balls of the same color do not create a difference. Okay? It does not change the number of ways. It looks as if it is the same arrangement. Okay? So, that is what we have to take, take into account in this problem. So, what do we do? So, first of all, imagine that, let us try to simplify the situation. So, you have 3 red, 4 green and 5, uh, five blue beads. You want to arrange them in a row and we want to count how many are there. So, so imagine that the, imagine that life was really simple and the beads were all of different colors. So, then how many ways of arranging them in a row would be there? Well, there are total 3 plus 4 plus 5 bits and if they were really different colors, then the total number of ways of arranging them in a row would be 3 plus 4 plus 5 factorial, right? Because the total number of ways of arranging n objects in a row is n factorial, okay? So, this is 12 factorial. So, suppose we have that kind of arrangement, but now in reality we have 3 of these beads to have the same color red, 
four of these beads to have the same color green and five of these beads having the same color blue. So, we have to take, in, take that into account now. Okay? So, how do we do that? So, so, again imagine a simple scenario when you have red and black. Okay? So, if it was just three balls red and black, then what do we do? How do we count the total number of arrangements? So, there are total three. So, if they were different, they would be of the same color, uh, they, they would be there would be three factorial ways of putting them. However, now notice that, so suppose these are three spots where you have put the three balls, but now, so if, they, if the three balls were of distinct colors, then you would have total three factorial ways of arranging the three balls in these three spots, but now you have to use or kick in the assumption that two of these balls are of the same color red. So, how do you do that? So, from the distinct case, you imagine that two of these distinct balls now have the same color. So, what does that mean? That means, that if you took these two particular balls, so suppose the two reds are here, when you counted them as distinct balls, then you made a difference between which red was where. So, this and the switch were counted as two different configurations, but now in reality both of these two reds have the same color. So, they cannot be, so whether this red is here and that red is there or the, the other way around cannot be distinguished because they have the same color, right. So, you have to, you have to make a deduction because of that and how do you make the deduction? What you do is that you divide by the number of ways of taking these many red balls and arranging them among themselves. So, if there were two red balls and you had to arrange them among themselves, you could do it in two factorial ways. So, you divide by two factorial. So, this is equal to 3 and let us count by hand how many ways of there are of arranging two red and one black ball. So, R R B is 1, R B R is 1 and uh, you could put B in front. So, B R R that is it. So, you see there are three. So, in other words when from distinct objects you go to the case where some of the objects have the same color, what you do is that you count how many ways are there to arrange these balls of the same color among themselves. So, there, if there are k balls of the same color, then you can arrange them among, among themselves in k factorial ways and you divide the total number of ways of arranging the distinct things by this k factorial. So, let us now go to our problem. So, we have 3 red, 4 green and 5 blue beads uh, and you could if they were really distinct, you could arrange them in 3 plus 4 plus 5 or 12 factorial ways, but now the assumption that some of these beads are of the same color kicks in. So, first of all, let us take care of the red beads. So, out of these, imagine that the beads are all distinct. Now, out of them, suddenly three of these beads, three particular beads have the same color red. So, how many ways are there of arranging these three, three red beads, three beads among each other? There are three factorial ways of arranging the three beads among each other. So, to take care of the red beads, you divide 12 factorial by 3 factorial. This takes care of the deduction which needs to be made because three of the beads among the total 12 have the same color red. Okay? So, now, it is as if dealing with the situation that you have 12 bits out of which 3 are of the same color namely red and the remaining ones are all distinct. But we know that in reality in the problem given to us they are not exactly distinct, but 4 of them are green. So, let us now on top of this make the deduction 
which comes because of the fact that four beads are of the same color green. So, you have this, this number which assumes that three beads are of the same color red and all, all the rest are distinct. Now, among the rest, if you introduce the assumption that four are of the same color green, then these four bids can be arranged among each other in four factorial ways. So, you divide the number that you had, the number of arrangements that you had by these mutual four factorial arrangements. So, you divide by the number of ways of arranging four green bids among each other, which is four factorial. Okay? And now, this is the total number of arrangements possible if you were arranging 12 bits of which 3 are red and 4 are green and the rest were all distinct. But you know that the rest are actually not all distinct, but the remaining 5 are all blue. They are all of the same color. So, you have to make a deduction because of the assumption that the remaining 5 bits are blue. How do you do that? Well, look at these 5 bits. How many ways which are eventually going to be blue. How many ways are, are there of arranging these 5 bits among each other? There are 5 factorial ways. So, you, so you take the number of arrangements which comes by imagining as if these 5 bits were distinct and divide them, divide that number of arrangements by the number of ways of arranging the 5 bits among each other, the 5 blue bits among each other, which is 5 so, this is the total number of ways of arranging 3 red, 4 grid and 5 blue grids. Okay? And here is a sort of a more general way of looking at things. So, exactly sort of a more general or formal way to describe the same line of reasoning. So, suppose you have n 1 identical objects. So, think of balls with colors. So, n 1 balls of the same uh, of one color, n 2 balls of a second color, n 3 balls of a third color, da 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 up to n k balls of the kth color. And you want to arrange these balls in a row. How many ways are there of doing this? So, again deploy the same line of reasoning. First, imagine that all the balls were distinct. If all the walls were distinct, then how many balls are there in total? There are n 1 plus n 2 plus da 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 up to n k balls. If they were all distinct, then the number of ways of arranging them in a row is very simple. It is n 1 plus n 2 plus da 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 up to n k factorial, which is the numerator here. Okay? And if the, all the balls are really distinct, we would be happy and go home. But all the balls are not actually distinct, and in particular, we know that n 1 among these balls fixed n 1 among these balls are of color 1. So, let us take care of that and make the deduction. How many ways are possible? How many possible ways are there of arranging these n 1 balls among each other in 1 factorial ways? So, in order to take care of the fact that these n 1 objects are indeed n 1 balls are indeed of the same color 1 you divide the total number of distinct ways by n 1 factorial. Now, you go to balls of color 2 and how many there are n 2 of them. So, how many ways are there of arranging these n 2 balls of color 2 among each other? It is n 2 factorial. So, you divide the previous number by the n 2 factorial. Now, you go to balls of color 3. How many ways are there of arranging these n 3 balls of color 3 among each other, it is n 3 factorial. So, you take the previous number and you divide by n 3 factorial and so on up to color k, where you have n k balls. Total number of ways of arranging them mutually among each other is n k factorial. So, you divide the previous number by n k factorial. So, the total number is n 1 plus da 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 up to n k factorial divided by n 1 factorial into factorial da 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 up to n k factorial. Okay? Any questions? 
Okay, so if there are no questions, let us go on to another different kind of arrangements. These are circular arrangements. So, so far we have been discussing arrangements on a table like on a line. Okay? So, this is so here the arrangements are, are, on a, are on a circle. So, what is a simple practical scenario where you have to consider such arrangement, arrangements? So, suppose you have gone to a dinner party and there are these huge circular tables where friends sit together and eat. So, of course, if you look at the different arrangements of friends on chairs around this table, the friends will be arranged in a circle, right. So, circular arrang arrangements are important because we are always interested in who is sitting beside whom. So, uh, let us take uh, three friends, three guests A, B and C. Uh, so, just as a just as a sort of a, just as a warm up, if we were arranging these three guests A, B and C on a line, which we have been doing so far, how many ways of doing that are there are? There are three factorial ways of arranging A, B and C on a line, right. So, three factorial is six. However, so let us count the number of ways of arranging A, B and C on a circle. So, here is this. So, A, B and C, then C could be here, then B could be here. Uh, and if, if you if you think of it, these are the only three possibilities. Okay? So, okay. So, in other words, what we mean is the following that if you look at these arrangements, these arrangements are ex actually the same in if they sit on a circle. So, in linear case, they would be so think of this as a starting point. So, in the linear case, this would be ABC in the clockwise sense, this would be CAB and this, this would be BCA. So, in the linear case, they are all distinct arrangements. So, this will count, count as three distinct arrangements if, if you were arranging ABC on a line. However, here what is happening is that here on a circle, what we are only interested in is who is sitting beside whom. That is most important for us. So, then it, all these arrangements are the same because you see that you in all these three arrangements, the configuration of who is sitting beside whom is really the same. And if you think of it, the three arrangements are obtained from each other in a very simple way. So, you take the first arrangement, call it arrangement 1 and you rotate along the circle in the clockwise direction. So, C goes, so A goes to the second spot, C comes up to the first spot and B goes to the south pole. Okay? And you take the, call this arrangement 2 and then you apply another rotation in the clockwise direction. So, A will now fall to the south pole, B will now go up to position 1 and C will go to position 2. So, these are all really rotations. And why are the same? Essentially, you can think of them, it is like relative speed, which you have done, uh, probably done in high school. So, you can think of watching the same table from different angles. And then, for the same, uh, uh, it could be that the guests are just static and you are sort of going around the party taking pictures and from three different angles, the guests would be seen to be sitting in, at the round table in these three configurations. So, these three configurations of sitting the of the sit, uh, sitting arrangement of the guests is really the same. It is only the point of view that is different. Okay? So, in circular arrangement, we are going to count these as same. So, how many ways of sitting, uh, how many ways there are of seating the guests A, B and C at the table. So, again let us begin from a simple si situation which we know how to do, which is the case when we are arranging them on the line. And then there would be 3 factorial, which is 6 ways. And now we have to take care of these overcountings. 
So, how do we take care of the over counting? We notice that every configuration, so think of a fixed configuration here, start from here and enumerate along the clockwise direction. Every configuration by these circular clockwise rotations, they are giving rise to two more. So, every configuration is represented, every linear configuration is represent, every, every configuration of guests at the circular table is represented three, three times in the linear sense. Okay? So, if you take every linear, every configuration of guests sitting at the circle and write them out in a line by starting from this position, call this the first position and then listing out the guests in a clockwise direction. Then every configuration of guests give at the in the circular configuration gives rise to three configuration of guests in the linear arrangement. So, every circular arrangement is equivalent to three linear arrangements. Okay? So, if that is the case, then you count the total number of linear arrangements which is 3 factorial which is 6 and divide it by 3 because every circular arrangement is giving is equivalent to 3 linear arrangements. So, the total number of circular arrangements is the total number of li linear arrangements divided by 3 simple. Okay? Any questions? Okay. So, here is another uh, here is another um, way of doing this. So, what you do is that since you are the ro uh, since clockwise rotations are immaterial to you, what you do is that you look from the point of view of the particular guest, because you are interested in who is sitting beside whom. So, you imagine that you are one of the guests a fixed particular guest and then you look at the rest of the table who is sitting beside whom. Right? So, if you fix, if you look at the table from the point of view of one particular guest, there are two other guests who could be arranged in two factorial different ways. So, the total number of circular arrangements should be just two factorial ways of arranging B and C which is 2 as is the same here. So, you fix one of the guests as your reference point. So, it is similar to this reference frame in physics. So, you look at the table from the point of view of one particular guest, he could be anywhere, does not matter and then the rest of the guests can be arranged in any possible uh, way, any possible manner and that gives you a certain factorial which is the total number. Okay? Questions? Okay. So, here is this argument uh, deployed. So, how many ways can you arrange n different objects on a circle? So, uh, we will do it in two ways. So, first of all, we will count, we will take a circular arrangement and by clockwise rotation, we will see how many linear arrangements does it lead to. So, if you take a circular arrangement of n objects, if you take a circular arrangement of n objects, so let us say n was 3. So, let us call this position 1. Then by clockwise rotation, you could put it here or you could put it there. Okay? So, there are three positions for this particular guy. So, there are three possible circular, there are three possible clockwise rotations which give rise to three different linear configurations. So, for n, if there, if there were n objects, you could do this clockwise rotation n times. So, so, this could go here and then here and then here and so on. So, total n times. So, every circular configuration by this clockwise rotation will give rise to 
n linear combination, n linear arrangements there. So, in, in the case of a, b and c, we had n equal to 3 and we saw that every circular configuration at the table gives rise to 3 linear configuration. So, instead of a, b and c, instead of 3 guests, if there, there were n guests, then every circular configuration by simple clockwise rotation will give rise to n linear configurations, the same as the number of guests. And the total number of linear configurations of guests is n factorial and every circular configuration is giving rise to n uh, duplicates in terms of linear configurations. So, you just take the total number of linear configuration and divide it by the number of duplicates which is n to get the total number of circular configurations to be n minus 1 factor. And you can also deploy the same logic. Uh, so, you can also look at the rest of the table from the point of view of a particular guest. So, if you fix a particular guest as a reference point, then there are n minus 1 other guests who could arrange themselves across the table in any of n minus 1 factorial ways, which is also the right answer. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, this is basics about circular arrangements. So, let us uh, stop here for uh, today and next day we will continue with circular arrangements and go into further uh, details about counting. Okay?